make so many mistakes. I know that my niggas relate. Just to grab Must learn to trust. I am Bella Batstaff. She's an experiment. She's the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. Game when it comes to actually playing the game is the new total control scheme. It's been a jarring change for a ton of the player base. Moving on from the old traditional skill stick, the players that use hybrid at the time of this video, unfortunately, you're going to have to wait just a little bit longer before the hybrid control comes back. In this video, I'm going to touch just on total control. The reason why is that after about five to ten hours of playing the game and getting used to the total control scheme, especially for the average player, it is hands down far superior to skill stick. And again, I'm going to teach you all the annoyances and everything like that and how to deal with them. And I'm going to walk you through how to use it effectively. Now, for the controller settings, again, we're going to go with total control here. Auto backscape, please turn that off. This can cause you a massive issue when it comes to defending specifically, especially against an online opponent, because there will be instances where you do not want to have your back to your own goal tender when you are backskating. You want to have total control when defending the front. Shooting controls, leave that as camera relative. Vibration, I personally don't understand people that have vibration on. I get it for first-person shooters, but for me, I find this game hard enough as it is. I don't need my controller just randomly shaking all over the place. I just turn it off. Online passes and percentage. This has been one of the most talked about in tinfoil hat settings in the game. Guys, leave this out one more time. I've talked to the developers a number of times when it comes to pass assist. It is what dictates how much the AI will help out with your passing when you are aiming. Promise you, just leave it out one more time. On to the visual settings. Now, the main one is going to be camera. There are really only three options here if you are talking about strictly online gameplay. And if I'm being honest, it's really only two. But there are a lot of players that will benefit from the classic camera. It is the most zoomed in one of the three I've going to talk about. And I do think it offers some benefits when it comes to peeking and, and shooting because you're at a lot closer advantage. Same with when you go to poke check and hit, you're just at a much closer perspective. But I would say it benefits more in the one-on-one. -on -one. When it comes to setting up plays or defending them, it is far worse than the other two. Overhead would be the most popular, and the reason for it is simply because it allows you to set up and see the plays in the most zoomed out way, giving you a top-down look of the game. 100% best cameras you can use simply because it gives you the best look at what's available when it comes to passing plays or defense and seeing what's being set up for you overhead to give you a fantastic view. However, the one I use and prefer is Zone. It does everything that overhead does to that zoomed out effect to see offensive and defensive plays, but the one added benefit of Zone is that it will show you the neutral zone when you're in the offensive zone. And why that's important is A, to see if there's anyone behind you cheating, or B, you're breaking the puck out and you want to drop it back because that is really the most effective play zone will allow you to see the trailer and where they are on overhead <laughs> essentially guessing everything else when it comes to indicators and things like that that's all personal preference mess around with them all you want but the main one that we want to talk about and highlight is simply the camera so again to recap i would use zone that's my preferred one if it's a little too zoomed out and i know for some people it is the other option would be overhead next i want to talk about your lineup for anyone new to hockey ultimate team this might be a little weird but for all the veterans this will be pretty quick you want to make sure that you have opposite handed players on your left and right wings the reason for that is simply it sets up a one-timer in every single scenario it also allows you to cut into the middle for some of the most effective wrist shots so make sure that your lineup is set with left-handed players on the right wing and right-handed players on the left wing. Same thing for defense. At the point, if your defensemen are not switched and you have righties on the right and lefties on the left, they will never be in the one-time setup 
meaning that your opponent can basically fade your defense from having any impact offensively. Now, you could obviously manually switch them during the play, but there's no reason for that if you can just switch them already. I'm not going to touch on abilities and synergies in this video. I'll do that in an entire separate video. On to the setting. Now, like every year since 2004, when behind the net and crash the net and overload were introduced in the game, yes, it has been the exact same offensive strategies for 20 years. All three are still viable and have their place in NHL 24. Now, after about 75 rivals games that I've played, I'm trying to overload as well as trying to get behind the net, and I still think that behind the net offers utility. I do like Crash the Net quite a bit more this year than prior years, simply because you were rewarded for just shooting the puck on goal so much for rebounds because of how the equal pressure pretty much takes shots from anywhere. You'll get a large chunk of that offensive pressure. However, the issue with that is that you're giving your opponent a chance to regain possession. On top of that, crash the net is the least predictable, and I find that when you're cycling around behind the net, your winger will just kind of stay there in your way. So I've moved on. I am using behind the net again, and in this video, I'm going to show you the effectively used behind the net strategy. Now, when it comes to sliders, I am not going to lie. I actually don't think they do it. I think the AI is incredibly simple, like it has been for the last few years, and I think that these sliders, for the most part, are meant for offline play. That said, mm. there is one that I think does matter, but I'll walk you through why I'm going to mind the set. When it comes to carry and dump, just carry the puck in across the line. There's no reason to have it set over the dump side of things. Cycle and shoot, again, for your offense, I've never noticed this to really change any sort of positioning, especially when using behind the net. Mm. Since behind the net is all about cycling, set it all the way to cycle. Efficiency and energy, I find that when it's set all the way to energy, your guys will run out of steam really quickly, and they don't really gain that much speed. And when it's set all the way to efficiency, I find that they're just not really fast as much as they normally are. I leave this right dead in the middle. Don't block and block. This year, what about that HL23? Bringing the goaltender matters more than it ever did. You can literally risk a shot from the point if your goaltender is trained or if their goaltender is trained. When I'm not controlling my defenseman or the player that's getting in front of the puck, I want them to get out of the way. Setting it to don't block will make sure that they step out of the way of the team to actually get the shot. And it's completely random when they actually go down and don't block. They don't get the speed that you would normally get from the block. I am someone who sets all of their lines to the exact same. The reason for that is I just don't like it making it more complicated on myself. I know that there is a way to have lines that have different things that you're calling for as an opponent. And there is definitely a time to switch things up. I'll talk about that in a little bit later on in the video. All right, so let's walk through to use the behind the net effectively. First, I want to go over the types of goals that I look for. I think that every player has a tendency, and no matter how much or little you play the game, no matter what, when push comes to shove, you're more than likely going to go for one or two of these same types of shots. And I'll show you why I go for the ones that I go for. In NHL 24, I have noticed a great success rate on low far side shots. Not simply on just them going in, but also what they cost. Oftentimes, if it doesn't go in, it's kicked out right into the middle. Bang on Rebound. On top of that, because of the changes to the pressure system, you get a massive bonus whenever you take shots on goal. So this will also help you activate the full pressure system. That is when behind the net really kicks into gear once you've got the full pressure meter activated. I think what separates players from just being completely average and mediocre are the ones that start to look for typical plays in the NHL video game. More often than not, everyone just stares at the player with the puck. But once you have systems to play this strategy, place, you will jump up to the next division that you're in. So, for the behind the net strategy, here is what you're looking for every time that you get goal zone control. The more you're using with the puck in the goal zone taken by the net, your two other forwards will essentially follow in almost like a triangle shape. One will go and fall in behind the net, the other will slide out in front and get the block. Now, what you can do once you have cycled around the net, that's going to depend on your opponent. However, this is the basics of this formation. You can do this as many times in one cycle until your opponent starts to I mean, darling. Okay.
Yes, yes. I haven't seen the two yet, you know, but I... What I want to teach you when it comes to the behind the net strategy are the things that you can look for quickly that you can start to react upon without thinking. So we're going to use this rush as an example. All right, so when you gain zone entry, you don't want to always just take the player with the puck across the blue line and go right for behind the net. That's very easy to defend with even the most casual of players. So you've got to make sure that the play is open to actually set up the behind the net. So in this instance right okay. here, he's manually defending me, and I notice that my triangle player is now beginning to skate behind the net, while his defender is his front is staying right in front of the net. Meaning that I know I can fire this around the boards and get it behind the net. This is the most important part yeah, about I setting up behind the net because you will find instances in which that defender that, yeah, does not even. stay in front of the goaltender and will actually be able to get to the pass first that goes behind the net, meaning that you've just turned the puck over. If you're going to send it behind the net, make sure that your player is actually moving and going to get to that puck first. So your first read should be that far side winger. Here's another example of what to quickly look for when you've set up the behind the net. Once their CPU is no longer in position and you find...
Wipe him out as an available option, so I like having my defensive state. I also want to talk to someone here about how to effectively do chip shots. Now, you are not very good at using the L2 and back skating. I want to be clear, this is probably going to go rough for you the first few times that you try it because it's kind of going to go over for a breakaway. That being said, if you want to have the most effective shot at score, a chip shot, you have to set it up correctly and finally clearing it over the edge. Now, so what you want to do is play here. Backskate just a little bit to get your forward that is in front of the net to look at you. Once he looks at you, you want to fire towards the side of the team. I like to fire it lower so that balance can get tipped up into the net and has more success. Come on, Are you hungry? When the goalie is straight, we'll freeze the net. Get it back, you will get a large 
Let's see. Um. They're crazy people like that, eh? And they go and dive underneath the water, that's fucking mad. And under rocks? Yeah, and they're holding their breath. No, they're all crazy. defenseman to defend the blue line, but take your forward, and instead of pressuring that player, sit in the middle. This is, again, the first read. This is not going to work every time. But when you are playing players in low division, they are only making one read. So if you can take away that first read, and your AI comes and takes out your opponent, you can get the puck back pretty easily. So again, what I would recommend is taking your forward and try to make it your centerman, and have him just patrol the middle of the ice during a rush. Defensive pressure. What this dictates is how aggressive or passive your players will be in the defensive zone. In past years, protect net collapsing has been the best, simply because you just clog up in front of the net, and they really can't do anything on the other side. Well, I do think this has some effectiveness. Again, the issue with the full pressure bar means that if you go full collapsing protect net, you're essentially allowing your opponent to just sit there and get the full pressure when you're activated. However, the issue with high pressure is that it can leave your players out of position and they can cut right into the middle of the ice. Normal is what I've used so far this year, and it's been the most effective, and playing manual defense has never been more important. The defensive strategy, collapsing protect net and tight point, if you are playing someone that is just pumping you with shots, 
from the point, that is the only sequence in which you want to use Type 20. Now, Staggered and Collapsing, there are arguments for both of them. I prefer Collapsing, and the reason for that is simply because it fits the strategy in which I've given you for Progressive, right? You can always stick right on the bar. And why that's important is because it helps defend you far side post play, as well as those mid kicks. But if you are not controlling your defense mid, the AI will literally sit on the bar, basically nullifying any mid kick attempt. So if you're in a lower division, what I've noticed is that that's where a lot of the Michigans are moving forward. At the high end, division two and one, I myself have scored like five, and I consider myself pretty good when it comes to trying to just defend a bunch of mid kicks and not necessarily just kill for it. And I've never had it scored on, so take that for what it's worth. Offensive strategy. Now, Offensive pressure, this dictates the rush, which is, again, a little misleading. So offensive pressure, if you have a typical of attack, it means that your AI defenseman, when you are breaking the puck up, will jump up right through the neutral zone. And while that can help, what I find is that they're just being way too aggressive. And if you turn the puck over, whether it be right inside the blue line or in the neutral zone, that's a GG. If you have a set to defend lead, I notice that if someone's using a trap or collapsing really hard in the neutral zone, you really don't have a lot of passing options because your set jumping up into play, and that includes your forwards. It'll feel like they're just not going. I'll leave this set at standard because it makes sure that my defenseman is playing somewhat safe and your offensemen are actually moving. Now, the control no. breakout. This matters oh. very little just. simply because very few people okay. really actually know how to activate it correctly. To get the Get's. control breakout to actually work, you have to stick behind the net when the player is playing, when the puck is breaking. For about two to three seconds, that is what will actually have them initiate the control breakout. Now, strong side plan is probably the easiest and most effective, but really the one that you want to pay attention to is the quick breakout. Now, leave zone early, close support, and stay wide all have different benefits. However, I would choose between leave zone early and close support, and this is going to depend on your opponent. If you notice your opponent is extremely aggressive and they are attacking you in two, three, or just straight up always in your face, please use the close support. Again, this breakout is going to be the second you get the puck in the defensive zone. Close support will make sure that there is a weak side winger, the weak side is the side that the puck is not on, will be in the middle of the ice along with your centerman to give you an outlet pass. That's going to be your first read. If that's taken away and you're getting attacked heavily, you should be able to break the puck up the boards or whatever side you're on. Now, if they're being passive, leave zone early can catch them off guard because if they turn the puck over, you can fire the puck all the way around the other side of the boards and you can sometimes catch them for a breakaway again. But again, that's going to depend on the individual needs of your opponent. So much like the offensive zone when you were trying to make your first read, your first read when setting up leave zone early should just be your far side winger around the boards. He is not a puck forwarder. He's not a manual player defending it. You can simply hold him in place.
Who's ready for some hot? Hi, everybody. James Sabalski for EA Sports. We are set to drop the puck on some hockey ultimate team. <laughs> Two teams right. looking star for a win. And we are set to go. The Ducks take possession right. here on the opening draw. We are underway. Moves it quickly over to Marner. Here's a shot for a bad angle. Big save by the goaltender once again. Ah, beauty save back there. He's holding <laughs> his crease. this snapshot from in tight james that beats the goaltender but how about the will to get to those tough areas i mean that's what it's all about you can have the skill but you gotta have the will the duck strike first here in the opening frame a relatively early goal in here in this one well you can see that the team is starting to settle in and it's typically halfway through the period when you can see who's got the legs and who doesn't but it's been a consistent effort now they've got the lead hey often when they get the lead they finish the game with the lead so it's a nice way to start the game it's all right Oh. Nashville's moving it into the offensive end. Puck scooped up by Alexiak. And that goes off a player. The Ducks gain possession. Stretch pass. Fast and quick lead pass. The Ducks have it in the offensive zone. Things start to get a little physical out there. Nashville's got a hold of the puck now. Glory's got the puck. All the officials saw that trip, and the hand is up. The call. When the coach isn't going to be happy with this penalty, you have a one goal lead, and now you find yourself back on your heels, and the penalty kill has to come out into the job. Down the ice, we'll get an icing. <clears throat> the Ducks have created a lot of scoring 
chances tonight, and they lead it here late in the first. And they win the draw in the offensive zone, and they go to work. Ozone face-off, James. Critical time to gain possession with that clean win, and for the tired group, mm -hmm. they moving around and a real opportunity on net. Officials are set. Players seem ready. We're ready to get this thing back underway. Barbashev's won the draw. Takes the feed. Time to get a clean sheet of ice here as period number one comes to an end. As you heard the horn sound, we'll be back with much, much more as this is going to be a fun one tonight. Oh, no, got that. Nothing. <laughs> why you don't why not? You carry your vein. Everybody, welcome back to EA Sports. I'm James Kowalski. These rosters are absolutely loaded. Filthy amount of talent. Let's see what's in store for this hut matchup. Opening face-off is just seconds away. The Red Bulls start things off on the right foot by winning the opening draw. Calgary's got the puck against the board. Take 
with the pace. Motion to second. With the stop. The Ducks get a hold of the puck in their own end. Moves it quickly over to Lindstrom. And that's poked away by Zabinijad. McDermott's got it against the boards. Picks off the pass in the defensive zone. What the hell just happened there? Oh, fuck. <laughs> you only good cause you got good ping, son of a bitch. Not a penalty. Wow, I got it on the goalie. That gave shit. <laughs> Richards recognizing they're still short-handed here as they get ready for the face-off. And with the centers tied up, he swoops in to take possession. Here's a shot. Stuck by Shesterkin. Harrells is done serving his time in the sin bin. We're back to even strength. Well, everyone is up. The coach. 
coach knows exactly what the PK unit had to do, and they got out there, they were responsible, and they took care of business. Takes the feed. Sits it to the middle. Off the stick, and they can't complete the play. Centering pass. Great defensive hits up play to pick it off. They've got numbers. The Ducks gain control of the puck. Alexiev's taking it from his own end. Fires it on net. And the goaltender comes up with a piece of it to keep it out of the net. That's a great save, and the goaltender's like a sponge here. He just soaks and swallows it up and doesn't allow a second opportunity. Knocked away. Hughes takes the puck. Picks up the puck. Calgary's looking to break out of their own end. Takes the puck behind the net. Grabs possession of the puck. Back to the point it goes. Here's a chance. Puck picked up by Kessel. The Ducks gain the zone. Too much traffic in the lane. Quick feed to Sabinajad. Calgary's got the puck along the boards. And he takes a shot. Great glove save. Now he slides it up to a bench Alista. center it into the offensive zone. Moves it to Makita. They've got numbers here. Here's the pass. Oh, he comes up with a stop. Sends it quickly to Sabinajan. Calgary's got the puck inside the defensive zone. Greenway's got on the offensive end. Dished on over to Peros. And that was read perfectly. What a play by Barbashev. Strong defensive effort. Here they come on the rush. Swatted away with the stick in the defensive zone. Stopped by the goaltender. He reads this play perfectly, James. He gets tight to the shooter. There's no room to put it by him. Barbashev's going to play the puck behind the cage. Calgary's going to play it from the corner. The Red Bulls have it behind the cage. Barbashev's got it in the corner. And that's knocked away by Martinez. <laughs> There's the whistle icing the call. Big face off looming. Calgary's offense has been in full effect tonight as they continue to lead late in this second period. possession along the wall. Centering to the middle. And that's stopped. The rise of the game. Scooped up along the wall by Martin. Moves it quickly over to Sackett. To the front. Sends it down low. The Ducks have it against the wall. Quick feed to Panarin. Here's the chance on the attack. to play the puck. The Red Bulls have it now. On man rush. And puts the body into it a little comfort car hockey. Great heads up play in the defensive zone. And he takes the pass. 
Chance in front. And that's intercepted. She handles the pass. Great reach with the poke check. Pass across to Kuzmenko. Strong defensive effort. Cuts to the front. Shostak has got it and will hang on for the whistle. Well, he's been so dialed in all game, playing confident and controlled in the crease. More than half the period has gone by. Hope you're enjoying this one. Calgary's up one zip. Barbashev's won the draw. And the officials are calling a delayed penalty here. Looks like a trip. Calgary's through center and now in the offensive end. Along the half wall with the puck. Here's a short pass to Makar. Moves into the slot. Decides to think about it. Barbashev's got it deep in the offensive end. Quick pass to Makar. Looking to make something happen in the offensive zone. Here comes the official's call. Such a tough penalty to take when the game's within reach. Goaltender's always going to tell you after a great game that it's all about the team win, James. But I think he's disappointed here because he could just taste the shutout. He's had a fantastic game, one that he deserved and possibly earned. Just let that one go through. Richard's ready for the draw as they continue to be shorthanded here. Lindholm's won the draw here in the neutral zone. Oh, textbook. Good kick. He got all of that one. There's a great use of the stick right there to poke it away. The power play looking anything but as they give up a shorthanded goal with both teams back now at even strength. The expectation when you're on a power play is to score a goal, not give up one, James. This is a tough one to take for this group. Scoops up the puck here. Ducks cross the line and is on the attack now. Loves the puck into the corner of the offensive zone. Back at the point, they set it up. Let's it go! Stick save, just got a piece of it with that one. Moves the puck along the half wall. 20 seconds to go. Hurts. The go-ahead goal puts them in front. Well, and this has been trending. <laughs> <laughs> and defend James that low center of gravity strength good core and finding a way to hold the puck get their feet moving and make a play with it extremely dangerous and the goal is a result both centers ready to take the draw here coming up Sackick's quick stick lands at the puck here at center Calgary's got the puck against the half wall it out in front. and he shuts down a great scoring chance there Look out, here they come on the attack. Spectacular stop by the goaltender. How did he hang on to that? There's the whistle with an offside. Fuck, I'm going to cut him back. <laughs> <laughs> 